for me personally, the, the, the director, Joe Wright, hasn't really been one of my favorites. You didn't He's, even like Hannah? No. Uh, Hannah was... I went to see Hannah ba mm. basically because it's, 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 it starts in Finland. Yeah, and yeah, and, there's a, yeah, yeah. and the, that was the sort of curiosity, mm. sort of gimmick that was in it. And I thought Hannah was, I think it was interesting, but it was... Incomplete in, in a way. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, in a lot of ways yeah. it was sort of all over the place. Yeah, it was. And, and for some people that clicked, because mm. a lot of people thought that Hannah was really a, a masterpiece. And yeah. I never thought, I, I, I didn't think at any point while I was watching this that I was watching something really special. Yeah. It, was, it was a gimmicky sort of road movie kind of action hybrid that worked in some places and other p places it felt a bit poorly paced. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, a bit all over the place. Mm. There was this thing going on over here and then we go to this place and it's, it's, it's different and then it, it seemed like it was the kind of movie that I know that that was kind of the point, but it's, it, it felt like a kind of a movie that didn't really know what it wanted to be yeah. in terms it should, of genre. It should have been like a superhero origin story, basically. <laughs> yeah. oh, sort of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, what was the movie that I really liked? I actually liked, we talked about it, oh, you mentioned that you didn't like this movie, Atonement. Yeah. I really liked it when it came out. I, I, it, I thought it was just beautiful. Yeah, I never saw Atonement. I think... I think I saw Atonement on in an airplane. Yeah. On a long flight. I don't think that I saw it in the movies, and I think that was probably a big part of it because it seemed to be that this kind of grand visual yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I... uh, but I didn't. It, it was a problem of not connecting with the characters, mm. and there's something about Joe Wright's even with this movie, which I really, I, I really actually liked. Darkest Hour, but but even with this movie, there was at times there was this sort of disconnect, mm. uh, and I was thinking that if Gary Oldman wasn't the center yeah. of this, then it wouldn't probably wouldn't have resonated with me that much. Yeah, I think I read a review that ha put it pretty well that same idea that it was something like um, Gary Oldman's performance is reason enough to see this movie but it's not the only reason yeah. and that sort of sums it up because it's basically it's something like I don't know maybe 70% of it is just Gary Oldman's performance and 30% is just that's sort of a good movie also yeah. besides that one, yeah, they're, one they're, point they're... There's nothing patriotic in fighting to the end. Now is the time to negotiate. When will the lesson be learned? You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. I take full responsibility. Really? Really, yes, sir. It is the reason I sit in this chair. There weren't really any... There weren't really any... Nobody was doing a bad job. Mm. Um, I mean, the... Cinematography was uh, was beautiful. Yeah. There was re some really good. I mean, the first moment when you see Churchill in bed and he lights the cigar, mm. I thought I thought that was a brilliant shot. Yeah. That was really really well done in terms of lighting mm. and in terms of shooting, and it continued throughout. Yeah, I had and this thought. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you stop interrupting me while I am interrupting you? I had this thought about um, there's so many shots in that movie that could basically be posters. Yeah, so it's just beautiful, really beautiful yeah. shots. Yeah, um, the music was well, sort of what you expect mm. from a movie like that. Uh, all the performances I think I thought were good. Yeah, I thought Ben Mendelsohn was really good. Yeah, he was as as the king. Also because this ties so closely with the king's speech. Mm, it does. Yeah. Where you automatically, when you see Mendelssohn's character, you're thinking about Colin how, Firth, yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how he does that differently yeah. to Colin Firth. And I think they both did a really good job. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They, they were different, but it was, you know, mm. in terms of, of the movie they were in, mm. they, were, no. they were really good. Um, but yeah, I, ha I, I think that we, we have to talk quite at length mm. about Oldman. Because mm. 
If he doesn't win the Ac Academy Award for this. Who are the other actors? Um, like, I think it's Denzel Washington. Yeah, right? Denzel Washington's won uh, a movie I haven't seen. It hasn't been in film. No, no and, yet, and, yeah. and I don't know if it will. Uh, the last yeah, time, it, last yeah. time he was... Uh, yeah, Fences. Yeah, Fences yeah. didn't come I at all. Seen it. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I think the thing with both of those movies, as I understand it, that mm. they are so heavily marketed towards the African American yeah, yeah. Uh, target audience that, that, that probably Finnish investors might think that it's just not worth it no. uh, bringing them over here. But, but just in terms of just having seen Oldman alone, yeah. uh, because for me, a lot of people sometimes say that when an, when an actor goes through a sort of a transformation, they put on weight or they lose weight or they have heavy prosthetics or whatever. Mm -hmm. They say that, that he was almost or she was almost unrecognizable in that role. And I always sort of, for me, it's, it's probably because I, uh, I watch movies that much, I always sort of pick up on those things. Mm. But for the first time in a long time, if ever, in this movie, at times I had to really sort of remind myself that this is Gary Oldman I'm watching yeah. because he's so different yeah. from how he looks. The hair, the prosthetics, the voice, the posture, mm. everything yeah. was sort of taken away, stripped away. And then, and, and then there's just these few moments that you've, you see that Oldman sort of punkish, <laughs> yeah, yeah. punkish sort of slim, uh, yeah. you know, w what you're used to seeing him in, like films like like Leon or, or, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, or uh, the, the Harry Potter movies or, or Fifth yeah, Element. Yeah. No. And at times you can see that sort mm. of peeking through, but it's so rare mm. that for me, a lot of the time, and, and, the, and the thing is that, that I, 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 I read Empire's sort of puff piece mm. on the movie before, and they'd done five months of different prosthetics. Yeah. And the and Joe Wright said that it was curious that the more they made the prosthetics closer to the actual Winston Churchill, mm. the less it felt like the actual Winston Churchill because because Oldman was taking the character in his sort of own direction. Oh, okay. So they ultimately went with a prosthetic that doesn't exactly look like Churchill, yeah. but they felt that that fit the movie and fit his portrayal better. Yeah. And I have to agree, he doesn't look no. that much like Winston, because there's, there's been a lot of movies in recent years mm. where, where there's been different, and television, there's been John Lithgow playing yeah. Churchill, Brendan Gleeson playing Churchill, Brian Cox play, playing mm. Churchill. There's been all sorts of these, uh, uh, yeah, and um, Timothy Spall played him in, mm. in King's Speech, and they all sort of look a bit more like Churchill. Yeah. But the way he captured that yeah. with the voice, and yeah. he, uh, he also, I think he, they said that he, he practiced that voice for like half a year, yeah. so that it, it, it wasn't too shouty, mm. because he was a sort of this boisterous orator and mm. so on. It wasn't too shouty, but it was, it was, and it wasn't ridiculous, because it's, it's so easy to make a sort of caricature out of mm. Winston Churchill. Yeah, well. just imagine the, when you're an actor and you get a role Hey, you want to play uh, Winston Churchill <laughs> on a movie about the Dunkirk <laughs> event? It's like, okay, That'll no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was really, I mean, it was amazing, truly. And the thing about, there were interesting tonality shifts in the movie because it was really funny at times. Yeah. And then really dramatic and it was, uh, it was, it was really well made yeah. all around. You need to reply to the Lord Privy Seal. I am sealed in the Privy. Now I can only deal with one shit at a time. <laughs> uh, but, but, but the way you're doing your V for victory sign, hmm? well, in the poorer quarters, that gesture means something else. What does it mean? Well, I wouldn't like to say, sir. I was captured by the boar. I spent time in a South African prison. Up your bum. Sir. Up your bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that was that was also one of the things that Wright said that he wanted to do, that he wanted to sort of portray uh, a complete version yeah. of Churchill because he's, there, there is the there is the sort of the the cantankerous attitude mm. and then there's the drinking yeah and then there's the 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 poli the politics mm. and then there's the relationship with his wife yeah um and all of this in a in in a time of great national crisis yeah um and i thought and then then he also said that it's it's also like you said about the humor yeah. that it ha it can't be because it's also easy to make for this kind of movie it's it's easy for it to take itself too seriously True. although it is a very serious topic yeah. and this is i think this is what something that they also did in a different way in the unknown soldier where mm. where the whole horror of war that's sort of over overshadowing the whole thing that that sort of gets yeah, because you have to have enhanced this because yeah. they, there's these guys who yeah. are who are talking to each other and telling jokes and yeah. saying these and it's also sort of like, like an air bubble basically because if it's all about the horror of war it's it can be a bit much basically yeah. but then again i started thinking about christopher nola's dunkirk mm -hmm. and that doesn't have a lot of levity in it no no but it, it, it it's not an easy watch either no it's in, not. A, in a no. way it's yeah. it's it's sort of it, it is sort of an attack on all all yeah. the senses and and like i've said about that movie before that it mm. is a sort of a cinematic event it's yeah. sort of a ride that you get on a roller coaster yeah. and, and and then you then you don't breathe for yeah, two like, hours yeah, and, yeah. And, and like <laughs> this emax experience war just yeah war and yeah. then you go in